So uh, PowerPoint, right? So when you think about PowerPoint, this is what we usually get, right? Instructors tend to write every single word of their presentation in their PowerPoint slides. This makes it difficult for the student to pay attention and also to concentrate on the message. Of course, this helps the instructor because it makes it easier to memorize the lecture while at the same time allow him or her not to face the students, which may cause panic. Nevertheless, this tends to cause the students to get or out of their mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we've seen this a bunch of times. Right? No one will put this whole thing on PowerPoint, but we see this, right? We know that 177 rule, right? This is uh, have only one main idea per slide, insert only seven lines of text maximum, use only seven words per line maximum. The question is not, does this work? Uh, is this method really good advice? It is really an appropriate, effective visual. This slide has just seven bullet points. <laughs> so this slide actually does, in fact, fits the 177 rule. Many of you have seen this slide before, have been scared out of their mind every time you see this or are automatically put to sleep. So what I'm going to do today is to shatter this and give you a complete new way of presenting with PowerPoint, right? It's, and we're not, I'm not saying that we should get rid of PowerPoint. I am actually made the argument that you can use PowerPoint in a very effective way, you just simply use it differently. And what I, the way I'm going to do this is by giving you five basic principles. Hopefully we have enough time to cover all the five. The first three takes a long time. The last two actually are pretty quick. I'll give you five main principles or tips on how to convert your PowerPoints from this into a more effective type of presentation uh, technique. Make sense? OK, now, when you think about PowerPoint in general, we can summarize it. Uh, this new way that I'm going to present it is really taking a hold in the business community, right? So we can kind of summarize it in two types of presentations that we see out of the main people that present, right? This is one style, and this is Bill, Bill Gates. Uh, it will take you about what? Two days to figure out what the hell he's actually doing with that slide. <laughs> Um, and compare that to this. Yeah. <laughs> right? So um, uh, who's having more success right now? Right? So this is the idea I'm trying to present to you today. Okay? So first principle. The first principle, and by the way, uh, a lot of this stuff I'm going to uh, talk about today, it comes from many different books, but one of the main books, and I'm going to recommend two books for you today. The first one is this one. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to do today actually come from this, this book. How many of you have read this book? Excellent. So you learned something good today. So uh, presentation send, right? So um, a lot of this stuff comes from here. I certainly recommend it. But the main, one of the main points he actually said is that you don't want what you, you have to decide what you want. You want a presentation or you want it, a document. But you cannot have it both ways, right? A presentation cannot be a document. So the idea of printing your slides and giving it to your uh, audience as a handout, that doesn't work. If you're going to do that, just simply give the handouts and don't present anything, <coughs> right? Because uh, people know how to read. So the, the first idea with that in mind is amplify by simplifying. And uh, the reason I put the comics here is because comics have actually uh, really good at actually doing that. Right? They actually, what they do is they have a really simple image. And what they do with a simple image is that they focus on what they want to concentrate, on their particular idea that they want to, to actually concentrate. So uh, we have this, uh, this idea that the best way that we can <coughs> concentrate on a topic is by putting more and more and more information. But that's not right. right? If you think about any, any scientist, what you do is really to you know, understand a topic, to explain it better, you simplify it. And that's how you understand it better. So the first idea that, that you have to do is to take your PowerPoints and simplify them, right? And that way, you're going to be able to uncover your message, whatever it is. And comics is actually, that's what they do. So um, for instance, let me give you an example. So this is, a, this is a PowerPoint slide from one of the leading textbooks in economics. It's offered with the textbook, right? Um, someone out there have charged the publishing company a bunch of money to come up with this slide, right? Um, so if I were doing uh, lectures on this, right, well, we just read from the slide the same way I did it before. Demand increase the shift in the demand curve up, out to the right, your real equilibrium, yada, yada, yada. And then I will give you an exam, and I will expect all of you to actually know the answer. So if I wanted to simplify this slide, let's say you have a slide like this one. Hopefully it's not that bad as this one. Well, 
what will you get rid of it here? You, gotta, you have to get rid of all the stuff that you think you can actually do a good job at explaining and perhaps put a, some, leave something there to give the student a cue. So just get rid of everything. I, this is what I would do. I would get rid of all the stuff, put it in the center, and now I, the presenter, will start talking about increasing demand. Now what is the benefits of doing it that way for students, let's say? They keep the attention on you. They keep the attention on me, right? If I'm there, right, I should be making the student worth the time, right? They're focused on me. What else? What are the other benefits of students of doing it this way instead of the... What are you talking about? It's right there. Yeah, I'm, t I'm giving them a cue of what I'm going to talk about, right? This is what they, the only thing they need to know that from the site is my topic of conversation, my main idea, right? Now, the rest of the stuff, I will have to tell them. So they will have to take notes and discriminate as to which part of the uh, information I'm presenting to them is important. That process of discriminating is actually very, uh, very conducive to learning for the students. Transferring information from that slide into your notes, right, when you have this, Writing this on your notes, that's not learning. Right? No one learns doing that. But discriminating based on the, on the things I'm saying, now that's a lot more learning going on. And also you focus on presentation on you. <coughs> Make sense? OK, so um, let's do a, a few examples of this. Now, for the time, now I want to also show you uh, sort of techniques of PowerPoint. So I'm going to go between kind of principles and also techniques. Let's say you're a person who, who you take that, those, that this away, you'll be completely scared. Oh my God, what do I do now? I have to memorize all this stuff. Uh, if, if there's a, there are ways to, around this, right? If you like to stay in the, in the lecture um, you know, podium, which may or may not be recommended, but let's say you like to stay here, the first time you do a lecture, might, you might want to decide that. PowerPoints allow you to uh, have a really useful uh, feature, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, this is a 2007 feature of PowerPoint. This is what I'm seeing in my computer right now. Right? You're seeing this, but I'm seeing that. Right? So when you are seeing this, this is what, I, this is what my laptop had. Okay? So I see what's coming up, right? I feel that this is what's coming up after this. I also see I can advance the lecture. I have my notes over there, right? I have it in front of me. So um, this is very useful. You can stay here. You, know, you don't have to be, and you kind of get a cue of what's coming on. And that's kind of a good way for you to not having to put all, this, all the text here in front of you. OK, questions? Yeah, this is really easy. Uh, at, the, at the end, I can, I can kind of show you how to do that. But if you go to Slideshow, click on Slideshow on PowerPoint, and, just, and then click on Presenter View. That's all it takes. Just click on Slideshow, and then click on Presenter View. And um, all this information, most of this actually are, are in the handouts. And we can talk about it um, afterward. OK, so that's one option you have. Uh, so let me give you a. Simplifying data is another kind of challenge, so let's do an example of that. This is another uh, presentation by, a, by another leading economics textbook, presentation that um, someone, again, gets a lot of money for, for making up. And let's try to simplify this. So if I wanted to simplify this, how do I do it? Huh? OK, I can sort it, right? To make it more easy for people to see. I would take all that. Yes, right? I could either, you have to decide, right? You can take all that data out and just put the fact. Or get the fact away and just put the data, right? But both, why do you need both things? Why right? wouldn't you use an image of the world? You can use an image of the world? Yeah, if that's what you want to, if that's what you want to, it depends on what. So you, if you want to say that there's different um, incomes in different, in different parts of the world, you can just put a picture of the world with different things going on. Right? How long it will take you to figure out, first you have to read this, then you have to come here, read this, then you have to go here, and then what the hell is this going on here? Right? This, uh, this column, how does this relate to this? So this is a mess. Right? This is a, it has a lot of stuff there. This is what I would do. Now all the stuff that you said are actually definitely good options. Um, and the, the, the PowerPoint presentation, this, this guy actually goes into then highlighting the second thing. So there's. He has two slides for the same thing, and then he highlights one, and then highlights the other one. The information doesn't change. Not really sure what the, 
point of that is, here's what I will do. I will separate both things. This is one column. I got rid of all the fact, right? Because why do you need to put the fact? It's clear from the data what the fact is, right? I can just tell them. It's clear here that there are different incomes in different parts of the world. Now, uh, I got rid of all the numbers here. What you want is a visual representation. Why do you have to give them the number? Give them a visual representation of the difference. This is much better. Um, now, you also can use contrast, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second, contrast to kind of highlight what you want the students to see. All right, give them a little cue uh, about what you want to see the students to see. So you can contrast the one, the highest one versus the smallest one. Now, for the other one, then I will put this in two slides. Why do you want to have both columns in one slide? Here's the other one. Which one is better? I'm better, right? course, I'm presenting this stuff, so I have to be good at this stuff, right? So um, now, um, I, this is still not quite perfect, I think, in my opinion. Um, what else could, could you actually change? If you're actually going to leave the data, assuming that you're going to leave the data. I think there's still too many countries there, to be honest, right? Why do you need so many countries? Um, I actually will actually, this is a little better, I think. I might even take more countries out. But let's say the idea is that you want to have examples of countries in different parts of the world. OK, I think that gives you that uh, without having so many countries. So the idea is to simplify, right? There's a, this, con this concept used now in, uh, in design PowerPoint design called signal to noise ratio. Signal to noise ratio. And what you want is to reduce the signal to noise ratio on the slide. Get rid of everything that is just noise and just concentrate on your signal. So what I want you guys to do, and this is what I just did with the slide, just so you can see, right? So I got rid of the noise here. Fact two, there's also great variation in growth rates. That's noise. You, that, it should come from the data. You don't have to put it in the slide. Incomes and growth are on the world. Why do you have to have a title there? Isn't it clear that this is what you're doing from, from this picture? There's no reason to have a title. Um, and then you simply, Put, get rid of one of the column, and then put the other part in a kind of visual way. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a chance to do this. This is data that tells you why your students don't talk in class. Why your students don't talk in class. So uh, they are one way of presenting the information. This is the first slide you have. So the colors didn't come out very well in your black and white. And then in the bottom here, you have a little area for sketching. So this is going to be a think pair sketch exercise, right? I want you to talk to the person next to you and kind of write down. I see that you actually took notes over there. That's actually cool. Uh, just write down here or draw how will you simplify this information to make it more relevant to students. Yeah. Yeah, I have another copy. So talk to the person next to you and figure out. I'll give you two minutes. And we have to be straight on that because uh, we have Sorry. a lot of stuff. Let me hear for some ideas of what you, um, what you could do here to, um, to kind of fix this disaster here. Um, what will you do? What will you do? I like vertical graph. You like vertical graph, right? So you will put it vertically? Let me, let me hear from what you say. So wh why, do you like, why do you like vertical graph? Um, it's just easier for me to convey data that way. Okay, okay. So you will put them vertically? I would put them vertically okay. instead of having, like to reduce all the words. Like uh -huh. Uh huh. Put, or percent people on the y-axis and tiers on the Okay, axis. very good. So get, get, get rid of all the, all, the all the titles under the words, put it in a vertical way. Okay, other ideas. Yeah. Well, maybe like reduce the percentages, like that would be two or three, and then make it like a pie chart. Okay, make a pie chart. Okay. Um, now remember that pie charts are good when you want to have um, parts of a whole, right? So if, um, if this is, doesn't add up to 100, then the pie chart wouldn't work so well. But if it adds to 100, pie chart is perfect. Okay? Yes. We were talking about categorizing. Okay. Spheres. You know, for example, a fear of mice is not the same as fear of death. Yes. So you would perhaps want to take fear of death, heights, or, you know, some kind of a, a better classification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To bring these together. Yeah, that's very smart, actually. Um, we're going to talk a little bit later about uh, position of things. 
grouping in your slides allow the person to visually connect to what you want to say. So if you want them to group things together, then you can put them in a, as a group and they will actually make that on their own a lot quicker. Very good. What else? Tony. Well, those two things are redundant, the title uh -huh. and then the percentage of people listening is a fear, so you only need one of those. Yeah, so you get rid of one of those two. And then the other thing we were thinking about are a couple of different things. You could do this possibly as a continuum, mm -hmm. so then it would combine, I think, what the other person said back there, so okay. that, you know, people are least afraid of. Oh, I see. Continuum. Very good. Yeah, so you, yeah, that's, that's, which is what you want to say, right? You basically, if you put it in a continuum, you can put what people are most afraid of and what people are least afraid of in some kind of a continuum, and that's actually, uh, you can actually see that quicker. Very good. I like that. What about the colors? Anyone? Huh? Mm -hmm. Change the colors, right? Uh, what would you do with the colors? What do you think is a good idea? What would you do with the colors? Would you put more colors? OK, black, brown, black. So you get rid of this black here, and then, then what else? And you? Use colors that are more contrasting. More contrasting, all right. So, so maybe trying to at least learn a little bit about colors, right, and, and know if there's any relationship between the mic. What colors in the first place? Let's Yeah. Yeah. If you can, remember that. So you have a people might be might have trouble uh, seeing colors, right? So maybe you can just get rid of the colors all together. That will simplify this quite a bit, right? And then just put the names on the bars. That's one way of doing it. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say that about the colors because I was working on a presentation for something. Mm -hmm. and one of the people said was talking about how he's colorblind, mm -hmm. and having slides where colors are supposed to contrast. Yeah. Position. Not helpful. No, I agree. I mean, I, I was going to mention that, that eventually I try to, to not use a lot of colors precisely for that because I don't know who I have in my classroom. So, um, so all, all those things you said and the ones you probably didn't say, I probably, probably improved this a lot. Uh, but here's my example. Now, this is not the best example on the way you should do it, but there's one way of doing it. Um, what do you think? Yeah, going back and forth looking at the colors and going on. Yeah. There's no reason to go back and forth. You're, what do I want to say here? Well, sp speaking in public is really the biggest fear that people have, right? Seinfeld used to say that, that when you go to the, that, that this means that when you go to a funeral, the person doing the eulogy rather be dead, right, in the casket. <laughs> right? So, um, so this is what I want to point out. So I have two colors, right? Two colors, um, you know, red and, you can also do black and gray. Um, I think I have. A, now, where, what, where you use the color doesn't matter. The important thing is that you have in contrast, right? You can do it this way. It's, it's, it's the same thing. You know, it's just a matter of preference. The other thing I did is, uh, see, I, I was able to get rid of the word percentages by just putting the, the actual symbol that everyone knows what it is. Um, so this is one way of doing it. Again, what I did is exactly what you were saying. Uh, all your ideas actually will probably work out in the same way. What you want is to get rid of all the noise and just simplify. And this takes, you know, takes skill eventually to do that. It's, uh, it's painful because, you know, you're kind of attached to the way you, you do things. But this is uh, the point I'm trying to make. Questions? Yes? Quick question. Um, that category is just needles and getting shot. Like, are you referring to like, getting a shot or? <laughs> getting, no, getting a shot with a needle. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting a shot with a needle, yeah. <laughs> By the way, this, uh, this is from the, um, this is from, what's the name of that uh, company that does a lot of polling? Uh, Gallup, right? So this is from the Gallup poll, and th there's millions of this type of surveys out there. And the results are usually the same. Uh, speaking in public is usually alternate uh, between that and this, uh, what is it? It's not here, snakes are usually one that is also at the top. Um, okay, simplify. Okay, second, per second principle, perhaps more important than the first one, definitely more interesting. Picture superiority, all right? Um, some of you might know this, some of you may not know this. Uh, I'm going to try to change your minds on this idea too. All right, so picture superiority. Let's, um, I want to get, there's, I'm going to give you two, uh, two reasons why this is better. One, biological reason and a cognitive reason. The biological reason is uh, mostly in this book. So I want to have the, the guy who actually um, wrote the book tell you a little bit about it, all right? You'd think the decades of reading books and the ingredients on the back of cereal boxes would make the visual system very efficient at recognizing words without needing first to identify the letters. 
That's exactly what you don't find. Our brain sees the letters in words not as letters, but as tiny pictures. And we have to identify certain features in each letter to be able to read the word. Otherwise, the word is unreadable. That takes time. In fact, it's a bottleneck. We are incredible at remembering pictures. Hear a piece of information, and three days later, you'll remember 10% of it. Add a picture, and you'll remember 65%. Why is vision such a big deal to us? Perhaps it's because it's how we've always apprehended major threats, food supplies, and reproductive opportunity. The folks at Getty Images are in the business of selling pictures. Take a look and see what they have to say. Well, in Brain Rules, we learned that vision trumps all other senses. And what that means is that a picture will always have the ability to stop someone in their tracks and communicate an idea in a way that no other medium can. Ants continue to be in our top selling concepts. The three of them carrying the leaf, which is all about teamwork and, and effort and do it together and you can do anything. And then what happens if you crop two of them out and you leave the one ant on its own with that huge leaf on its back, suddenly it tells a completely different story. One of the challenges in business is to differentiate your product or service from a competitor's. And the central component of that is your brand and how you express your brand. What we deliver is the visual component of that. The goldfish have been in our top sellers for as long as I can possibly remember. And it's this idea of going against the stream, standing out from the crowd. In one, he's leaping away from you know, the standard life, and then the other one, he's already there. From a customer perspective, what this means is that my product stands on its own. So the idea here is, it's not that, uh, that really that a... Uh, that a picture is worth um, a, uh, a thousand words, it's really that a picture is worth a billion words, all right? So pictures are not better, they're way, way better. All right? This is actually uh, some kind of a summary of the research that you can find in this book, Brain Rule. By the way, like I said, there's two books that I strongly recommend you go and buy after this. This is the second one, right? It's a fascinating book, it has 10, 10 rules uh, that are research, right? Based on the research of the brain, and this is one of them. Uh, uh, presenting anything with pictures and text is six times better. The, the recall is six times better than if you just simply do uh, text. Now, John Medina explained some of the biological reasons as to why evolutionary, we think that that's, that that's the case. There's a lot of research to support the idea that the, the vision is a, lot, is a very complicated sense and it's actually trump any other sense. They did an experiment with, um, in France when they actually fool these French wine connoisseurs and they, pour, they change the color of the wine uh, and then they give them uh, white, uh, red wine that was colored uh, white wine and when they start drinking the wine they were using the language they were using for a different color wine. Right? So they did not think about um, those things. So vision is, a, images are very important for this. Now, when you were a kid, you actually did a lot of this stuff, right? You, you remember, anyone seen the, the, the game um, Simon Says, right? Simon Says, right? So, so let's do a little, a little try out here. What you're gonna have to do here is, I'm just gonna tell you what to touch and you just simply touch it with your right hand, right? So for instance, uh, touch your head, right? You touch your head, you can do it now. <laughs> with your right hand, touch your head with your right hand. All right, we got the, we got the hands, uh, okay, good. And then uh, touch your elbow, very good. Touch your nose, touch, touch your eye, touch your knee. <laughs> Half of you did this. Now why is that? Vision trumps text, vision trumps text. Um, it's in fact, um, there's a lot of research out, out there saying that um, not only is we were evolutionarily prepared to do vision, is that now we use vision so much more and we depend on it so much more that uh, the brain is actually creating real estate in the, uh, in the brain to actually in favor of vision and against some of the other senses. Um, but uh, that is the biological reason, the cognitive reason. Why is it that presenting text and images are present, uh, better? Well. Uh, there's a lot of research on cognitive theory. That, uh, this guy Pavio is probably the, the most important one. They developed this theory, dual coding theory. Pretty uh, also uh, tested uh, ad nauseum. He said that memory has uh, basically two channels that go into your memory. One is a verbal message, and the other one is a visual message. And this enters into your memory from different channels. Now that's really important because if you have a message and you only use text, 
right? You're forgetting the whole Euler's channel. So what this said, if you present, this is the reason why presenting a, a, mes uh, a message with text and image is so powerful, because it goes through two different channels. Now, the other part of this is that if you forget that and, and you have a slide with a bunch of text, and then you also saying orally what's in your text, then you're overloading this channel. And there's also research to support that. That when you present text in a slide, a bunch of text, and you repeat the text with your words, you're overloading people's memories. You're not making it better, or something might be intuitive, but you're making it worse. And that sort of makes sense. You're trying to read. You have someone else trying to tell you what to, what to read. So you're, it's too much. You're, you're working too hard. You're, you're making the students work too hard. It's much better if the verbal communication or the verbal message comes from one source, either text or orally, but not both, right? So, um, so this is a lot, another strong argument for using images. So um, here's what I had originally, right? And I told you that I had reduced, got rid of all that stuff. Here's a much better way of doing it. Now, the pictures have to be related to what you're saying, because you don't want a picture that is complete. I don't want a picture of a bear here, right? Because what does it have to do with increasing demand, right? So, but if I have a picture of a long line, here's uh, one thing. If there's one thing that I want my students to know after an econ class, is that long lines are a sign of inefficiency. Economists hate long lines, right? Long lines means that the price is not making, is not correcting the problem. So this is what we have. When you have an increase in demand, you will, you will have an inefficiency for some time. It's a long line. OK? Questions? Basically, what you're saying is using something like this, you can even use it without the text and just, you just say what yeah. you want to say. Yeah, yeah. indeed. I, 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 it's good to have. Uh, I sometimes put a cue so the students kind of know where I'm going. I think that someone mentioned that before. Like, can you give them, an, like, where am I going with this? Uh, and in a moment, I'll tell you all the things that, thing I do. I give students outlines so they know where I'm going because I tell them picture, outline in the outline that they have in front of them. Um, but yeah, I think if you do that, you can just get rid of all the total text. Just put the image there and talk. Right? And, and the information is coming from two channels, right? So the, 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 the students will remember this. Now, uh, uh, as a point of interest, that not only works with pictures, there's a lot of research to suggest that concrete text is actually much better at recall than abstract text. Because as soon as you read, what you're doing in your brain is in, you're making an image of what you're reading. Right? So if, you don't have to, you're, if what you're reading allows you to make an image easier, then you will remember it easier, because you can access it a lot better. Yeah? Now, sometimes Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna go to that. So if you, if I convince you that this is the way, um, let me see. So what I, the way I have this first is by um, by giving you know, an example of another slide and how I converted that slide into more of a visual way, right? So this is another slide, and I'm gonna get to the to where you get the images in a second. This is a, a slide that I have in my first slide, um, first class in economics, right? Main economic problems since all resources are scarce and since they could be distributed different ways, give everyone the same, leave it to chance based on need. And the idea is that we need economics to find the best way to distribute the research. So this is like what I, how I used to have my slides before. So how I converted this slide? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each statement and I'm going to put them in a different slide. It's probably going to take me about the same time to go through those three slides than to read this one slide. So the idea that the more slides, the, more, the longer your presentation, that's not true. The longer your presentation is how much you actually say. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a function of how many slides you have, right? You can have six slides and go faster than reading this slide right here. So here's the first one. <laughs> right? Uh, it's fun to find these slides, actually. When, I, when you find this one, I say, yes, I got it. Right? Uh, here's the second one. Balance, right? Equitable. Uh, here's the other one. Chance, and it's the best one. Oh, right, it's so cute. Right, I love this picture. So, um, so this is the main idea, right? I, I'm basically telling them the same thing. They're getting the same messages, but hopefully they will remember it better um, in this way. Um, now, let me, before I tell you where to find images, let me give you a few tips of how you can improve putting images in your slides. And by the way, all this stuff is in your handouts. 
I saw one of my steps is gonna be that all the stuff I say here, the important stuff, you don't have to write down because it's, it's in your handouts. But here's some common mistakes. And the image is too small. Right? This is very simple to fix. Just make it bigger. Right? Um, and other mistakes. The image is placed at a weird location. I'm going to tell you in a second, in a little bit, some tips of where to locate things on the slide so it's easier for people to see it. Uh, but be intentional. If you put the image there, it's because you think there is where it works better. <laughs> right? But it, so you put it there because you think, well, right at the, at the center, at the top, I think that's where people are going to look at. Right? Well, that's okay. But don't put it there because you were kind of late and you say, well, I put it anywhere, they'll see it. Right? Just be intentional where you put the, the things. Um, hesitant. You know, you kind of want to make it bigger, kind of that the whole screen, but you kind of, you're not quite there, right? There's something preventing you from making this, this image the whole screen. Just make it the whole screen, right? You're almost there. That white space in the corner looks kind of weird, right? So um, in, a, in, a, I'll, I'll, in, a, in the handout, I'll have some tips on how to bleed the image of the page, make, make, meaning take the whole, the whole slide and making a, a, an image. Be bold. Don't do this, please, <laughs> right? It's just not cool. So um, make sure that you know, the students will see this, right? This, is, this looks like you, I mean, you either don't have, you really don't care about the presentation or you're kind of like not really sure about proportions, right? So um, uh, here's another one. What do you say here? It's a really easy tip to fix that. You take a text box on PowerPoint, put it in front, and make it transparent. I have tips on your handouts on how to do that too, right? So I basically took a, t a text box, a great textbook, and pu I put it in between the slide and the text, right? And then I take the, transpa I take the transparency feature and I made this textbook transparent so the text kind of pops out. It's very, very easy way to actually um, put text inside the images. <coughs> Questions on any of these kind of techniques before I tell you where to find images? Yeah, so the text box, right? So the text box is, it starts as a completely black box. And then I go to the, uh, the, um, the properties of the text, <coughs> right? There's different ways to access that. And then the very first one, I think, has a bar that says transparency. And then you simply move that bar, and it's going to get more transparent or less transparent. The more transparent, the more you will be able to see, the, more, the less it disturbs the picture because you will be able to see across. Yes. Well, so, yeah, that's very. I'm glad you brought that, Mike, because that, that was my uh, my next uh, this text. <laughs> what you're saying, right? So, the, you have to be wary about your pixelation, right? So, the idea here, and I have uh, things in your handouts. There are ways to get to get better images, and the the main cue is that you want an image that is at least as big as you, as the size of your slide. So uh, in a second, I'll show you what, what I mean. In the handouts, I tell you exactly what the usual resolution in most screens are. So when you look for an image, that's what you have to look for. An image that, that the original size is that big, so therefore you get, you get the full effect. But if you go, this is a picture that I, and then, you know, please don't do this. This is just, this is just wrong, you know, this, uh, this whole thing with uh, you copy it without paying for the, for the image, or you, uh, you didn't care about royalties or anything, you just put it in your PowerPoint slide. Um, but here is here, you have the pixel action problem. Okay, so um, now the last thing I want to tell you is I, I used to use this picture, and that has worked relatively well with the same topics. But the reason I got rid of it is because these people right here. So we have a natural tendency for faces, particularly humans' faces. So you have to be careful with that. If you have a picture that has faces that are really um, visual and really um, uh, kind of take precedent, the students are going to get distracted. They will look at this, and they might get distracted or not, because we naturally have a tendency to focus and concentrate on that. So in your pictures, in your images, it's OK to use faces. Just make sure you put them in the, kind of in the background. And again, be intentional, right? So make sure that if you have, a, uh, you have an image that have uh, clear faces kind of in the point, if, you, if that's where you want your students' vision to go first and stay there, totally cool. 
But if you want your students to focus on something else in the picture, in this case, I want them to focus on the fact that there's a lot of people in the line, they might focus in here, because we have, there's a natural tendency for that. OK, here's a lot, of a lot of information. Where to find good images? All right, so here we go. There's, uh, there's, I gave you some slides on your, on your presentation, your handouts. But um, here are my favorite sites, the four, my four favorite sites. So I'm going to go first with the free ones, and then I'll tell you the, the, the paid one. The, the, obviously, the, the easiest is to go to Google, type the word, and then you, get a, you go type images right here, and then you get a bunch of images of whatever topic. So in this case, it's scarcity. So give me one. Tell me something. Twilight. Twilight. Wow, you have to give me something that is kind of hard to spell. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. So did I get it right? Wow, my God, I got it right. That's incredible. Um, so once you get the images, so remember what I told you about the pixelation? You want images that are big, right? So, um, so what you do here is you want, you want to click here. They have Google give you different size option. Uh, if you go in any size, then you if you right click here, it kind of tells you how big the image is. This, this image is too small. If I put this image on my PowerPoint slide and I want to kind of zoom on it, you're going to have that kind of blurry kind of look at it. Uh, same thing with this image, right? 470 by 348. What you want from Google, you want more than 1,000 in both numbers. From Google, you want more than 1,000 in both numbers because this, this, these images are not necessarily high quality. So um, if you want to get your images that way, um, but what I do is I basically um, click on large, and most of the images you get here are actually usually pretty big. So I can use this image. This is something I can use in my, in my presentation, so 1,000 by 1,000. So it's this one, right? Qu questions, make sense? Here's another, uh, you don't find what you look in Google, so it's a, it's a process, right? It's fun. I actually have fun looking for images. Uh, Looking for the right image that presents your message kind of helps you understanding your message a lot, a lot more, right? Uh, so it's a process. Uh, here's another really good site. Uh, this is uh, free images. So and the quality of the image is a lot better here. Now, with these images, uh, once you click on the image, uh, Stock Exchange, it will tell you up here what the royalty situation is, the permissions. Now, obviously, you're using this in the classroom. There's a lot of murky legal, legality and so fair use and stuff. So for most part, you'll be OK. But you should always try to be careful about the, the, the royalty for images you, you use, particularly if you're going to use it outside the classroom. But even if you use it in the classroom, I think you should be careful. So most of these images, when you click on royalty, uh, when it says there usage, royalty free means that you can use this image if you want to. And this image is actually. Um, they, you see, they, they come up really big. They're really nice. You get really, really good quality with this. Most of the, 75% of the image I have in the presentation today come from this side. Uh, stock exchange. Uh, here's uh, the third uh, free option is Flickr. You're probably familiar with it. Um, the only thing here is that you, if you, Flickr also have the same permissions issue. So people put pictures there, but that doesn't mean that you can use them whenever you want. Uh, so the pictures that you can usually use really uh, easily is they're called Creative Commons. So just when you click on Advanced Search, you're gonna get a you're gonna get this screen right here. Just make sure that you click only search within Creative Commons. Those are pictures in Flickr that are usually royalty free that you can use with any kind of um, problems. The problem with um, the problem with uh, this is a problem. With, this Twilight actually works well, but one of the problems with Flickr is that the searching mechanism is sucks. It's really, really bad. So you're going to get a bunch of pictures that may or may not be related. So I recommend Flickr when you have something that is really, you really want. So if I want a poster of Twilight, you could probably get a good poster of Twilight in Flickr. But if, you wanna, if you're not really sure what your message is and you think it might be related to Twilight and you put it in Flickr, you're going to get a, me a mess. Right? And then the last, this is a pay site, but this is where you get the best pictures. Right? This is the best pic image site out there. It is expensive. Uh, it costs about 80 cents per, per photo. Um, 
but the image of the quality is amazing, and the searching um, way is, is incredible too. So uh, I have a membership here, so um, I, let's say I spend maybe like $40 a semester, and then if I don't find a picture in any, other, any image in any other way, then I go here, and I might actually find exactly what I'm looking for, then I pay the 80 cents. Um, sometimes I get an idea from here, and then I go back to the other place, and kind of it's like a process that way. Is there a yearly membership? Yeah, well, there's different memberships. Uh, it's a pay-as-you-go, in which way you pay 80 cents per image. The membership is, uh, they have a th three months membership. I think it's about $600, and you can download as many images as you want in any day. Um, so it gets expensive when you're gonna download a lot of images, but obviously I think the best way is, um, you know, one good way would be to, you know, com convince the people at your department to really, you know, buy a membership to this. Questions about images? Did I answer your question? Um, there's, I also gave you more places that you can actually find images uh, on, my, on the handout. Nancy? Are there any kind Oh, yes, I'm glad, I'm glad you say that. Uh, yeah, clip art. Don't use clip art, right? It's just, it's just not, I mean, people have been using many, many times. It's just not, it doesn't look very professional. I mean, I think most people that tell you about PowerPoint don't use clip art, right? Try to use images that, that, are, um, that are kind of more, you know, more professional looking, more sophisticated. The other thing with images, in addition to the things I said and the faces, try to do uh, images that are not very complicated, right? So images should be simple that the student can actually get the main message right away. Um, the, it has to be related to your, to your message. Um, other than that, I mean, there's, um, you know, if, you're, if you have a certain, you can get really picky, right? If you have a certain color theme in your presentation, then you can actually look for a certain color theme in your images. But I think as long as you apply those things today, I think you'll be in good shape. Yeah. What about a collage? How do you feel about having a collage? Uh, let me think. Yeah, I think collage is good. I usually, I don't have a, yeah, yeah. That's, I, I usually have a, a one slide or two that is a collage. I wish that I, uh, I have put it here. I can show it to you uh, afterwards. It's usually when I have, let's say I have a presentation that has three topics. Then what I do, my first slide has three pictures. As I arrange as a, as a collage, right, covering the whole thing. And that gives them a visual cue. So when they see this picture, you know I'm talking about this. When they see the other picture, you know that my presentation is on the other side. So yeah, I use collages are fine. Um, you know, you should be careful how many, how many you use, but they're, they're perfectly fine. That if you use it, if you, if you want to, technically you should. Yeah, you should give credit to the, to the picture. Most of these pictures you don't because it's royalty free. But when, when you click, remember when I told you that you click on that royalty in here? So, uh, so if you click here, it will tell you, sometimes it doesn't say royalty free, but sometimes it will say, um, uh, what does it say? Um, <coughs> Uh, exceptions or something to use, and then he says, you can use this picture, you just have to give me credit for it. So when he says that, you have to give the person credit at the end of your presentation or somewhere in your, in your web page. But when he doesn't, you can actually use it for free. Per the person just put it there and you can use it. Sometimes he said, you have to give me credit, I never alter it, you know, so it has um, those things in there. Well, the, the, basically then, if you have a good camera and you have a time yes. Yeah, I think that was, that, that's my last point before I move to the, to the next topic. It's like if, if you start doing this way, uh, now iPhones, you have a camera in your phone, right? Then the idea, you know, try to look at the world, what's happening out there, and when you see something interesting, you just take a picture of it, and that's the best way to get uh, images, really. I use a lot of images that I actually take myself on my, with my iPhone. And iPhone pictures are great. I mean, the quality is really, really good. So I'm better quality than any of these pictures. Okay, so let me uh, see, uh, I wanna make sure I go over. So, now I'm not a designer, right? So, uh, but I have, uh, I've, uh, I've read a lot about this, so I'm gonna give you just, uh, just some basics, and I'm gonna go fast over this so you should know. Uh, I don't think you should be an expert, but you should know a little bit about design to improve your presentation. So here are some things that I think might be useful to know. The first one, we kind of talk about it. Contrast is interesting. Contrast is interesting, not visually, 
but contrast of opinion is interesting. If you want, your you want to engage your student, you can actually, you should offer them contrast. If you want to engage them visually, offer them contrast. Uh, you could do a contrast with color. You can do contrast with this, you skew two dogs, right? Uh, you can do contrast that way by size, different sizes, different color, different sizes. You, could, you can do contrast by putting things in different places, by position, right? You could go into contrast that way. Um, so, uh, and you know, you remember the, the image with the color. Color is a really good way of doing contrast, right? So contrast is important. Make sure you understand kind of the, be the, the best way to do it is with color, with size, and with position. Yeah? I have a color, uh, I have a question about the dogs. Uh -huh. Maybe go back to the dogs. Uh, here we go. You said not to turn off the lights because the students will go to sleep. What about putting, let's say, a making contrast gray here and putting a red background so we, we because the dogs sort of yeah so sometimes what I do like in a room like this um, what you could do is to simply have a black background and have white words and that would probably it's just a problem is that um that right now uh, we have if I have this slide it's probably see that's much better see so this is how my lecture hall looks like so if my lecture hall looks like this this works really well and I think since lighting is usually not great in most places, I usually go with white. But if lighting is going to be really good, then you should, you should perfectly go with black in the background and white with the letters. Right? Very good question. Um, contrast. Position. Alignment. So th th think about that slide, right? If I want you to, if I want you to focus on particular points of this message, right? There's, there's different parts. There's the title, there's me, and there's my association. I can create contrast by grouping those things in different places, like that. That's better, right? So now I have, I'm using contrast to, to, to create a difference between my main topic, my, my subtopic. I am actually putting this clearly below because there's two different things. This is, my, this is me, and that's my topic. And then I'm using contrast here, black and white, to actually tell you the difference in between my name and my association. I can also do it this way. But the, and it's basically the same idea, using contrast and position to kind of highlight what you want people to look at. OK, uh, what do I have here? I'm going to go over fastly over this one. Uh, types, right, tells you a little bit about your personality, right? So for instance, uh, you should know a little bit about type. If you use Courier New, you're organized and structured. If you use Common Sense, you're playful. If you use Times New Roman, you're lazy, apathetic, or your amenities, and you always use the default. <laughs> Don't use Times New Roman, please, please. Um, now, if you freehand script, you're a horrible speller, so you try to hide with a hard to read font. Now, type is important. There's two main things you know about type. That's what you should know. There's two types of types, serif and sans serif. Serif are, word, are types that are really good for reading because you can actually see what kind of word you have when you're very close because it gives you have that little kind of end to the word. You see that little in the S? It has that little thing at the end, kind of like a, right? Versus this one that has nothing, right? It's a clean word. This is sans serif, that's serif. Um, the one I'm using today is called Guild Sense. And that's usually the one I use. Do not use serif fonts in your presentation. You want to use sans serif fonts in your presentation. They're clear that it's actually a lot easier to see the words with that type of font. Okay, what did you say your font is? Gills Sans. Yes, it's, uh, I'm going to write it here. Gills Sans. Most PowerPoints should actually have it. It's the, one I, it's the one I usually use. I try to use one type throughout the presentation. Um, more than one type, it, um, it's OK. Two types, I think more than. You want to create contrast in one slide. But it's kind of a good idea to use the same font. OK, here's another good, uh, really good tip. So remember this picture, right? So here's a, different, here's a picture. And I, if we put a, a white background, you get the idea, right? So, uh, there's this theory called Gestalt theory, without giving you a lot of like uh, 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 a lot of details on this. Theory. But there's a lot of um, design uses this theory. One of the principles that they have is called closure, and the idea is that your eyes are gonna try to close the image if the image is not complete. Now, 
there the image is complete because it has white here or a different color here. Now, if I want to take advantage of that principle, closure principle, what I can do is to expand this image. And what your eye will do is you will close that picture for me, whichever way you want. Make sense? So this is a lot more effective because you are bringing closure to the actual picture. So uh, this is really, really easy to do. Uh, here's another example. See that? See, that's an incomplete, this is what a picture that I got. So if I put that in the corner, you finish the picture. And it's a lot more, it's a, lot, it's a nicer look, it's more sophisticated, and it also allows you to use your own imagination to start to complete my image. You get a lot more from it. Okay, here's another idea. So um, I, when using location, and you don't have to do it basically, but there's a basic idea that, that, that photographers use that is called uh, the rule of thirds. And if you can imagine the PowerPoint slide as a grid like this, and you can do this with the grid lines, I'll show you how to do this in your handouts. The idea here is that these points right here, the crossings, are called power points. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to be close to the power points. Your, your elements should be close to the power points. Because vision, there's a lot of research to suggest that putting the thing in the middle is not the best. Right? Your vision doesn't work like you think it should work all the sometimes, right? We read from left to right, and we other sort of things. So we actually tend to uh, focus more on, on elements that are in those areas. So this is a really effective because I don't actually have to use the this grids anymore because I you don't have to do it. You can do it mentally, right? So I know that I don't have to always put things in the middle. I can put it around and actually create more effective work. That's what I use for this picture. See that it's in the PowerPoint. Yeah. There, there's a theory that um, in, in um, looking at the eyes and, and uh, people going to art museums, that the eye tends to start at the upper left and sweeps in Z fashion down yeah. to the lower right. That's true. Is that, is that why you... Yeah, that's part of it, right? So I can also put things, you see what, I, I can use the thirds in any way I want to. I can put the, my words at the top and the top third. And then if I have text, that's the best way to do it. Actually, that's why we do it. I put that the first in the first half, the more text in the second half, third half, because you know, you're right. People actually, we read, we actually see in that way. We go like this, and then we come back, and then we come back. There's people who do put, bring people to the laboratory, and they kind of see what, how, you know, how they're looking at stuff. Yeah. OK, so uh, what else I have here? Two more things, and then we're done. The first one is pretty easy. Make handouts, right? This is the best way to liberate yourself from your um, uh, kind of big slides. And the way I do with my students, if you allow me here, because I'm really lazy and I'm not going to go back to the podium. Sorry. Uh, that's all right. My fault. Um, I think at some point, yeah. So here you have an outline of the presentation. This is what I give to my students. Presentation outline. It basically tells you I sometimes put the actual pictures in here. And I post this for them beforehand. They can print it and bring it with them to class. And you see that I have here Guy Reynolds' presentation stand. I don't want my students to take notes on that. If I think this is a good book and you should buy it, I just give you the actual text. Right? So whatever I want my students not to take notes, I put it there to make sure they do. Make handouts. Last one. And this might, you may or may not go with it, but I find that when I come planning a lecture or a presentation, I have to step away from the computer. It helps me a lot to see things better. So this is. My presentation, how it started, this is my blackboard in my office. That's how this presentation started. So I can see, I can step away from it and then see, and I put my ideas in this little uh, sticky notes, and then all, all my ideas, I just write all my ideas there, and then I go there and start to organize it. That's how I end up. Five points, one, two, three, four, five, and an introduction. All right, and that, that was my presentation. So, uh, that's all I have. I'll leave you with the last tool, and the, which is the idea that uh, I am more than happy to help you guys. I put a lot of stuff in the handouts. The, the key here is, and I want to, this message is important, I have to give you all this technique. You want to obsess about ideas, not about tools. Okay? So you want to obsess about ideas and not about tools. You don't have to apply all this stuff. Just make sure that your message, what your message, message is, and this is just a way of getting it better. Thank you. <laughs>